Microphone check one two one two. Oh, I'm Hi, mommy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. How you feeling today? Very well. So you know that I'm doing these interviews for the documentary about Uncle Anthony. God rest his soul. Yeah. So why don't we start off with you telling me how did you first, when did you first, not even meet him, but when did you first see him dance or see something that he had? It was in the 80s, <clears throat> the mid 80s. And I had gone to Trinity United Church of Christ for a service, 11 o'clock service. And all of a sudden, you see the dancers come out. <coughs> Excuse me. And him, he came leaping down the aisle. <laughs> and I thought for sure that he was going to land on the altar. And do you remember what song? I, I don't remember what song it was. And I thought that was, it was really emotional, yeah. you know. Well, moving forward about another couple of months, after Jason had passed away and you were having your little emotional breakdowns. What do you mean? Being stubborn and pig-headed. <laughs> pig-headed, mama. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So wait, backtrack for me. So when did Jason pass away? June 26, 1992. Mm. Okay. And you were two and a half years old when he passed. Mm -hmm. And I waited another whole two years. And they were forming a children's dance ministry. Now, I'm going to pause you for just a second. Because, you know, I know it's you and I talking, so I know a lot of these stories. But for folks who maybe don't know a lot, don't have as much context as I do, can you share who is Jason and why sure. was that significant? Why is that date significant? Jason was my only son who died from varicella pneumonia. Wow. I don't know that I've ever heard you call it that. What does that mean? Chicken pox. Wow. I, I've always heard you say chicken pox and pneumonia, but maybe because I was just young and wouldn't have known what you were talking about. But yeah. Okay. So Jason passed away June 26, 1992. All right. He was how old? He was 13. Yeah. And so what was kind of like... What was happening for you around that time? Well, I went into a kind of a depression, mm -hmm. but I still had you to take care of. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my coworkers came back to the house for the repairs, but Jeanette, one of the nurses I work with, you were, she was, you were leading her in a dance. And I enrolled you in ballet class on Ballet on Broadway. Mm -hmm. and, and we were just talking about that. And then when you turned five and a half or six years old, I put you in the dance ministry. Mm -hmm. Deborah Merchant was the choreographer. 
and he used to get on her nerves because you'd be in the corner chewing on your hair and doing everything except paying attention. Oh, like acting like a five-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> but, and you did your first little dance in, in the congregation. Anyway, Deborah had to step away from the dance ministry because she donated her kidney to her sister. Oh my God, I remember that. Miss Cato. Yeah. Wow, I totally forgot about that. And Anthony came in and he was conducting the dance ministry. Wow. And after a while, I've forgotten many of the details, but it was after some event, Anthony walked up behind me and said, you know, tryouts this weekend. And I told him that you weren't yet seven years old. He said, I think I can work with Rashida. And that was our entry into New Life Performing Company. Wow. So, okay. So Jason passed away in 1992. What was, I feel like I remember you saying you saw sometimes shortly after that, or maybe it was a few years after that, you saw them dance to, at church one It was, it was, um, it was the remember? Christmas program, the, the first, Christmas celebration in the 400 West 95th Street building. Wow. It was a Christmas concert because for a while I had stopped coming to church. Really? Why? I didn't have the energy to get up. But I remember Brian Reverend Ozzy's youngest son leading, leading the choir in Stand Still. He was a little boy. Hardly could reach the microphone. And I just had a revelation. What was that? That God wasn't through with me yet. Let's see here. Let's take a, a little pause. I love. Now I want you to tell me when you hear um, the song. What does it? What does it do for you? Or what memories come to mind? When I don't know what to do. What to say? When I don't know what to say, where do I turn? What are the answers? To those questions that she to have no answer. Well, I can see the the dance ministry dancing with conviction. And it amazed me that so many teenagers
especially the males, would become involved in dance the way that they they did. What was special about that day when you saw them do things for you personally? I had I had to stop, to forgive myself for not following my first mind and taking, taking Jason to the emergency room. And that there was nothing that could be done about it. And that I'm was wasting my life away more over somebody who wouldn't come back to me, but I would go to him. And I had you to worry about. But from that point on, I, I made in my mind that I couldn't stop living. You turned out to be just the solution to my problem. I don't know if you know, but as much as this interview and this uh, this experience is, you know, the documentary is about Anthony, you really inspired me to create this, you know, uh, one, the name of the documentary is Stand Still. And two, over the course of the time that we had with Anthony, I watched you document him. Just about every rehearsal, every dance we've ever done, anytime we've performed somewhere, I'm very grateful that even though I don't physically have them in my hands right now, that I know that there is a wealth of uh, footage and, and memories and you know stuff from you know our new life days and the way we were performing and just the fact that you made it a point to get every recording when we did that so that that was something that we could have and look back on and it's been 13 years since Anthony, it has, it's, it's been 13 years. It feels like just yesterday. Literally just yesterday.